to work on yourself and to realize how blessed we are with the, the core aspect of life that we have and to share this great opportunity of uh, learning about how to do uh, self-healing uh, for ourselves and for those that we love and all you know, our clients that we, we love as well. Because it's, it's really something wonderful when we can help another individual to have a breakthrough in their own realisation of who they are and how they can manifest their health and, and love in their life and to be part of that process. So that's a very great reason to live and uh, that's why I love being a part of this group. So, uh, and good old Albert here has obviously got a good frequency to match because uh, he's just telling us that everything is energy and everything is frequency. It's not philosophy, it's physics. What's wrong with you? Yeah, does this good. My German accent's pretty good, isn't it, Max? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Sehr gut. <laughs> Love it not. <laughs> Okay, so this, uh, this slide is a, uh, a NASA picture of the um, radiation of the universe. And it basically shows, uh, perhaps in this, this view, shows you a little bit better how the Milky Way, which is that sort of layer of cluster of stars in the middle, is encompassed with this huge big uh, band of radiation that is present at this particular part of the galaxy. And um, they call this the, um, these gamma ray bubbles extend for huge, huge amounts out into space. And of course, what happens is everything is moving in the universe, including our galaxy and including us and our solar system within the galaxy. And so this next picture really shows shows us a little bit more about how uh, in our solar system, we're part of a, a group of solar systems that move around in the galaxy. And we're at a very interesting stage of the revolution, which occurs every 26,000 years where we go once around the galaxy, um, where we've come up to this thing that they call the photon belt, which is this big mass of cosmic radiation. And uh, so it means that we've reached a, a point in the evolution of the earth where um, we're being exposed to massive amount of cosmic radiation of different types that uh, are very unusual. And uh, so these, these new forms of, of photonic uh, light and radiation is uh, bombarding our solar system and it's being processed through our sun and redirected about out, back out into the solar system. So like a step down transformer sort of approach, but it's basically giving us an opportunity to um, change, uh, change to expand our consciousness through the increasing amount of light and radiation that's coming from these uh, central portions of the galaxy. And it represents, uh, you know, the dawning of a new age, the age of Aquarius. We've gone round once, we've passed through all of the different astrological signs and we're, we're starting again. And uh, this has been the, the foretold time that everyone's been looking forward to, the next 2,000 years of light. And the great opportunity that humanity has to take advantage of the increase in the energy to transform their own energetic structures. Now, a lot of people don't really understand what our energetic structures are. So I thought we need to, uh, if we're going to be doing energy, energy medicine, we need to understand the energy structures and how the actual game works, how it has the energy flow and um, work in our bodies. So the next, um, I'll come back to that. So the next slide looks at the human energy field. Uh, and this is basically, um, actually, I want to, before I do that, I'll go back one. 
So this particular diagram is uh, Burkhard Helm's, Helm's concept of a 12th dimensional information field. So Helm was one of the key uh, physicists that helped Marcus Schmidt um, to, uh, to develop his time waiver uh, uh, technology. And his fundamental grasp of a unified theory which incorporates consciousness into it, which is one of the first times that that's been accurately done. So Marcus uh, obviously was very resonant with that and he's presented it in a way which makes sense to just help us understand that we are individuals that exist as multi-dimensional energetic beings and the dimensions of consciousness uh, 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 essentially different densities of, of energy or light <clears throat> going up to the 12th dimension. We, we currently exist in the third and fourth dimension planet. And of course, in our universe, we have uh, uh, another eight layers of, uh, of energetic light and consciousness to evolve through and into before we unify back into the divine source. So these 12 dimensions have been broken up into different layers here to assist uh, us understand how it relates to the time waiver uh, Healy technology. So what we have just quickly is that on the fifth and sixth dimension, we have what Marcus refers to as the energetic control level. And that the fifth dimension and the sixth dimension basically relate to the evolution of uh, the mental consciousness of humanity in the fifth. And then into the sixth, we see the uh, embodiment of the, the soul. The, the, the first aspect of our divine nature, uh, which is the immortal component which continues to live through all lifetimes and uh, is associated with reincarnation and the transfer of uh, the consciousness through multiple stages of evolution. So the sixth dimension and the fifth dimension essentially is where the heart and the mind unify and come together. And in that way we can now access the information uh, in the higher dimensions. <clears throat> so our, our big goal at this time is for people living in, in this time on earth is that using the, these cosmic radiations to assist in our expansion of consciousness to evolve up the scale through uh, higher into the fourth and fifth dimensions and clear out whatever energetic blockages are there so that we can start to embody the higher levels of consciousness back down into our physical bodies. And in that way, uh, enhance the flow of divine energy into, into the physical organisms that we are. <clears throat> Being divine beings with the physical body. And you might think, well, that's a bit of a pain, but uh, the physical body um, is, when it's working, is really wonderful. It's, it's a real blessing, it's a temple. And we get to feel the beauty and the sensation of love and joy and peace and all of the wonderful higher aspects of consciousness when it's working properly. So if we go up a bit to the seventh and the eighth dimension, this is sort of where we go into higher conscious states, consciousness states, uh, which um, Marcus and Burkhardt recall, refers to the information field. Some of you might have heard in other philosophies of the Akashic records uh, that would also fit into this level of um, conscious um, consciousness, conscious evolution, that you can start tapping in to the data that exists in the complete quantum field of, uh, of the universe. Everything is there. It's all stored for you, for everyone, for everything, everything that's ever happened. It's beyond time and space. Uh, and so it's all there that people can tune into. 
But unfortunately, you have to raise your level of consciousness up to at least the sixth dimension and then start breaking into the seventh dimension until you can access the uh, Akashic uh, information. So that requires quite a commitment to doing your own deep energetic healing work to clear the obstructions that are present in these lower fourth, fifth and sixth dimensions. And uh, so, can, so basically that takes time, effort and commitment and know-how. And unless you've learned some type of energetic testing procedure, it becomes uh, rather difficult because uh, there's so many different other aspects or oppositional forces that are trying to stop you from evolving, basically. So, but the beauty is that Marcus has tapped into this information field using his quantum sensor. And even though uh, we may not have done our own, you know, evolutionary clearing and tra of our trauma and our other, other um, blockages of caused by fear and negative emotions and other types of energetic dysfunctions, the time waiver and the Healy device has developed a technology that allows the access of that information. And so that information can now give us insights as to what blockages are happening in these lower dimensional um, spaces. So hopefully um, that sort of makes sense because it's an overall world view or picture of multidimensional existence as multidimensional energetic beings. So our goal is to try and clear out whatever's blocking the flow of this energy down through these dimensions into the into our physical body. <clears throat> and that's the model of the universe that um, many philosophies integrate and have used. They call it different things. And this is just another way of presenting it um, to everyone in this using Burkhardt's model. So now that relates to our understanding of where we are positioned in the evolution of consciousness and how we can access different aspects of our multidimensional being, we need to know now, okay, so what are the energetic structures that we have to deal with? And so the first one is, of course, the energetic field. Uh, these fields are all dimensional fields, which relate to those different dimensions. And so they access the data and the energy from each dimension, and it's all in there. Everything is stored. It's like a big hard drive. So what we need to do is to work out, well, okay, in these inner fields, which represent the, the, uh, the etheric or the, the mental and emotional uh, dimensions, uh, what sort of rubbish and things and energetic blockages are inhibiting the flow of this higher dimensional energy, this divine energy down into our bodies. So these energetic fields uh, focus down into what we call the chakras. You've all heard of the chakras, I assume, by now. And this is sort of like a little diagram which shows you there's the seven primary chakras in the, in the body. Now, these, there's actually more than seven. It goes up to 12. So, <clears throat> and each layer of each dimensional layer of consciousness has its own set of chakras as well which they overlay each other just in different space time configuration. So you think of yourself like in a bubble where you've got different layers of energy coming out and that energy um, has these seven to 12 vortexes, which are pulling in the, the cosmic energy into a point, which then is distributed through that energetic consciousness layer. And the way that that's distributed down through the fields, through the chakras, you can see here, there's the different chakras here. We have uh, the earth star chakra, as well as the soul star chakra, and even a few more above that. And you can see that the vortex is open from the front and the back. So you have you know, energy that can flow from um, the earth, which comes up through the base. And then you have energy that comes down 
from, from the cosmic source, and then we have access to energy that we can breathe in um, and through the ingestion of um, food and stuff. So once it goes into the chakras, it then gets distributed down the meridians. So each dimensional layer has a set of meridians. And so in our particular body, our physical uh, third dimensional body, we have a set of meridians which uh, distribute the energy from the chakras, from the fields, from each dimension. And that basically sets up the flow of um, life force which is a type of uh, divine energy, which has been stepped down to, uh, to enhance and to provide the energetic uh, uh, basis of how the cells communicate and how they derive their energy and function as a, uh, as a unified whole. So that's the structure of our energetic bodies, um, energetic fields from different dimensions, feeding into different chakras, in the different dimensions, feeding into the meridians, and then finally feeding into the, the nervous system um, and, and into the cells of the uh, physical body, the tissues, the organs and the cells, and even the microorganisms that exist within us all require this type of energetic transfer. You've probably seen these uh, meridian diagrams if you've ever had acupuncture which again is, is another energetic method of treatment, which resolves uh, the blockage of the flow of energy due to different types of things, traumas, uh, injuries uh, most commonly, but we can also see blockages due to um, mental and emotional uh, or disorders and, and uh, psychic sort of psychological disturbances as well. Because thoughts and emotions are, guess what? Energy. <laughs> They're just another form of matter, in a sense, which we can't see, but we generate. Um, but it's a form of energy. It's a form of what we call scalar energy, which is not, uh, not the same as the electromagnetic frequencies and energies that we're used to playing with in our particular this particular density of third fourth dimension so scalar scalar wave uh, energy is more going into the fourth fifth and sixth dimension and that is a higher dimensional source of energy that's associated with different forms um, of subatomic particles which then generate their own waves uh, which have uh, this type of uh, unusual scalar energy. It's basically what we would relate to as uh, the life force energy that flows through the, those dimensions. And so thoughts and emotions are different types of scalar uh, frequencies and energies. Every, every thought, every emotion has a frequency. Every molecule in our body has a frequency. The bonds that bind individual uh, atoms together have a particular frequency. And so that's how the whole body communicates through, through frequencies that come into resonance. <clears throat> resonance is basically where uh, two energetic fields uh, of a, uh, combine and overlap and then come into resonance or come into coherence which means that they uh, come into harmony together. A little bit like when you uh, play a string on, on a violin uh, and then the, the other violin on the other side of the room will start to vibrate because the two strings uh, have the same characteristic frequency and therefore they come into resonance and they harmonize together. And we'll talk a little bit more about how that happens because this is one of the key factors of how energetic medicine works uh, through coming into coherence and uh, resonance with, um, with different frequencies. So every molecule, every atom, every organ and tissue all have their own resonant frequencies which come into resonance when a particular function 
is required and therefore they can attract energetically the energy and the substance that they need at any moment in time through this type of um, frequency interaction. So we see here in this slide that the body, the physical body, um, uses electricity primarily, uh, which is stepped down from these scalar fields in the quant from the quantum fields to the scalar fields, down through the magnetic and electromagnetic fields. It all gets transformed down into electricity. And this electricity is used to power the cells. And all the cells produce electric fields across their cell membranes with a negative, the, the, the inside of the cell is negative compared to the outside. So if you think of a cell in the cell membrane, there's a, there's a, uh, a charge that builds up in the membrane. It's more positive on the outside and negative on the inside. And that sets up a electric potential, which allows the transport of different substances in and out of the cell. <clears throat> we have specific pumps that um, work by using the electric potential that exists across these membranes and that creates the, the electric um, charge to facilitate the opening and closing of different uh, pores and, and channels and pumps. The electric fields are also generated uh, in collagen arrays in the connective tissues. So these include tendons, ligaments, bones, cartilage, the fascia, which is like a type of connective tissue that covers the bones, ligaments and cartilage. <clears throat> and all of that is embedded into what we call a ground substance, a, a matrix, which basically glues everything together. And that forms a totally integrated network within the body that allows the body to vibrate as one and to sense and transfer information through vibration, through frequencies. Uh, other examples of electric fields are the nerve conduction, the, the, the electricity that flows through nerves as they fire, muscle contraction generates electric fields, even the secretion of specific glands uh, creates an electric field. So these, all these electric fields generate a frequency which communicates the information to the rest of the body through this liquid crystalline ground substance or matrix that connects all the cells together into one big mass. And so everyone, every cell knows what everyone's doing. It's, it's constant symphony of, uh, of frequencies being played and everyone knows what's going on. And that's really how the body communicates uh, through these electromagnetic frequencies. It's not through the chemical release and the transport of chemicals through the body, through the blood, up to the brain. All that is secondary. Those types of things take too, too long to happen. We need instantaneous moment to moment uh, communication, which is done through uh, the energetic fields that are connecting all cells together. And here we see this slide, which you might have seen before, which shows you that the cell voltage in the cell membrane of cells is, is a critical thing. As we said, it, it provides the energy and the voltage in order to um, transport stuff in and out of the cell through various enzyme uh, receptors and ion channels. So uh, we see in this diagram that the young healthy cell down the bottom here has a, a minus 70 millivolt charge, which stores up in the cell membrane and therefore has plenty of electricity there to, to drive the energy of the cellular functions in this transportation process of getting rid of toxins, taking in nutrients, and just generally regulating the, the cell membrane's response to the external environment. Okay, every cell has to communicate externally with the environment, with the cells next to it. And a lot of that is done through different receptors on the cell membranes. And those receptors have to undergo uh, uh, changes in their structure in order to uh, open and close and to 
to initiate a sequence of uh, transferring the messages through to the nucleus of the cell, to the DNA. So the cell membrane is a good marker of the health of the cell. And for many of the prakis that are on the call, we, uh, we can use bioimpedance as a useful tool, like in the VLA uh, units that we've used in the past with metagenics, uh, to measure the reactance and the resistance and the phase angle. The phase angle is, is exactly what we're talking about. It represents the amount of charge that's stored in the cell membranes. So that's where we had a high phase angle meant you had a high, um, your biological age was, was, was much uh, more healthier and lower uh, for your age if you had a high phase angle. Now we can see that as certain things go wrong, the cell's membranes become damaged and weakened and they can't hold the, the, um, the charge. That can be due to many different factors. It can be due to um, nutritional insufficiencies, particularly. Uh, fatty acids like fish oils and um, omega-9 fatty acids, omega-6 ratios are very important in the structure of cells. So the right type of oil coming into your diet is important. Trying to steer away from other toxic, um, you know, oils which have been damaged by heat um, and are more susceptible to heat damage. So inflammation is also another major cause uh, through oxidative damage to the cell lipids. And you can see here that as the charge decreases, the overall function of the cell basically deteriorates and at some point it loses its function and can become prone to developing and in, turning into a tumor cell and ultimately dying. So that's sort of like the game. We need to have a certain amount of voltage, certain amount of electricity in the physical realm. And we get that from the higher realms through uh, the interaction of these different particles and waves from the scalar field, which then comes down through different dimensions and allows us to harvest that energy uh, through the, uh, the higher dimensional flow and, and then allows us to harvest energy from the environment as well. At the end of the day, it's all about energy. And this is a picture of this liquid crystalline network, <clears throat> which is not a very good picture, but it's, it shows you that within the cell and even outside of the cell, you have this crystalline lattice of connective tissue, which suspends everything, even inside the cell. We have these um, micro clusters um, and microtubules, which basically hold everything together. It's like, this, it's like the backbone of the cell. And that helps with intracellular communication. And then as we go outside of the cell, we have this whole network of, of the uh, ground substance or connective tissue, which glues everything together and essentially acts as a secondary sensory system through which electrical charges and frequencies are felt. So that's what we would call, say, basically it's functioning like a computer chip. You have a liquid crystalline network, which secondarily is hydrated with water. Water molecules are attached to each of these little structures. And this is why water is so critical into the human, um, to, all, to all life, because it's through the hydration of these particular structures that the transport from the transport of electrical and, and electrical energy is, uh, is transferred through the cell and through all the organs and tissues as well. So it doesn't work without water. And that's why if you're dehydrated and you go to do your Healy, then you will probably get a, uh, you know, a slightly poor connection, of course, with the, with the leads and it might show up that you're not getting a good contact because you're not hydrated enough. And also, whenever you do energy work, uh, you have to take a fair bit of water in just to try and enhance the overall uptake of the frequencies throughout the whole system. Being dehydrated and doing energy work is, is just giving you a 
a reduced beneficial response, in other words. So always take at least a couple of glasses of water before you start to do some energetic um, healing and that will enhance the response to the body. Okay, so what comes first, the chemical or the electromagnetic? The energy, of course, and um, while pathology can manifest as a chemical imbalance, the underlying problem is always energetic, electromagnetic in the physical realm. So we need to look at things differently and we have to look, okay, so we've got a physical problem. Uh, we could have inflammation. Let's say we have arthritis. We've got inflammation in the joints and there's deterioration of the cells that are in the cartilage and so forth. And so first we have to think radio, how do we stop the inflammation? We can use specific drugs, of course, and get all sorts of side effects, but we can also use natural anti-inflammatory uh, treatments like herbs and certain nutrients. But we have to really understand that it's the energetic dysfunction that is happening first prior to the chemical dysfunction. So, and when we start talking about energetic dysfunction, we, we can start to working, working backwards up, upwards through the dimensions. We have to start looking at, okay, well, what are the emotions that are tied up with this? What were the fears that generated those emotions? What were the beliefs that created the fears? Uh, these are the structures of energetic dysfunction that is causing the blockage and to the flow of energy into the joints, which then manifested as inflammation. So even if we treat the joint with anti-inflammatories and we control the pain, it will never really get better until we start to deal with the upstream causes, which relate to more than likely emotional toxicity due to uh, fear and other types of dysfunctional beliefs. So that's why energy medicine is a little bit more all encompassing than just, you know, putting uh, like a direct physical treatment into the person. And by all means, we still need to have physical support. The tissues still need to have nutrition. They still need to be hydrated. We still can support them with appropriate uh, anti-inflammatory herbs to, to assist that process. But we need to also address the upstream causative factors. It might be due to, for instance, uh, that these causative nutri um, mental and emotional disturbances uh, causing the buildup of toxicity in the joint, right? And, and there's a change in the pH of the joint, which is more acidic, and that amplifies the pain receptors. So we start to think, okay, well, we need to do detoxification, right? Okay, everyone needs to detoxify. We've all got this accumulation of crap and toxins in our body. But what caused that? Was it just due to your environmental exposure? Or in fact, was it due to an energetic dysfunction which caused the toxins to accumulate were those energetic dysfunctions relating to your mental, emotional, um, psychic dysfunction and stress-related issues that you've been generating through your, your picture of the world, your perception of what's good and what's bad. So we have to come back into taking greater responsibility over how we visualise and interact in our life if we are going to stop this type of dysfunctional stress response that creates most of these diseases. So we do have a greater responsibility. So the second component here on the slides says that hence we balance, hence balance can often be restored by providing the correct or healthy frequency and in training the oscillations back to coherence. So what that means is that let's say um, let's say we've got this arthritic arthritic knee, and we have uh, we've looked at specific uh, issues that relate to emotions as being that there's toxic emotions that are blocking the flow of energy into the joint. So what we could do is we could say, well, let's try and come up with a frequency that will provide 
a example of how those cells could function in a, without toxic emotions. So you provide a frequency which is like a perfect blueprint to, to compare. It's like, okay, so you're dysfunctional over here and now we're going to give you a frequency which shows you how to be functional. Okay, so this is what we want you to do. And so when you start putting in frequencies like that, even though there may not be um, a direct resonance straight away, what happens is that the two waves that are being generated can become entrained and come into coherence. So by providing a, 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 healthy, a healthy frequency of what, what should be there, it will then allow the frequency of the damaged um, tissues to come into compliance or to be entrained. Does that make sense? And that's what we call coming back into coherence, where the two waves are oscillating in the same frequency. Right? So that's one, one of the ways how the time wave works, uh, the, how the Healy works. It creates a frequency of the, of the actual uh, condition not being there. And in that way, it provides a template, an energetic template for the tissue to respond to. And that way it, it can be very helpful. The other way that frequencies work is that if we look at this, if we look at negative frequencies that, that are present in the tissues, uh, that a substance or its electromagnetic signature can be used to challenge the defense and repair systems to respond without any side effects, unlike pharmacological interventions. So that's just basically saying that energetic frequencies really don't cause any major side effects, unlike drugs. But the other thing that I want to get across here is that in some cases, an imbalanced system, such as what we're talking about here in the arthritic knee, can be restored by introducing a signal that cancels the pathological frequency that's disturbing the body. So, okay, so now we're putting in a frequency which exactly matches the pathological frequency, only it's out of phase. And let me show you what I mean. So here we go. On the left side of the slide, we have two waves, A and B, and you can see how they're, they're basically moving in the same way. They have the same curve, the same amplitude of the peaks and the troughs. And so when we, that's what, what I would call putting in a positive frequency to try and entrain the tissues to bring it back into to a better state. And that's what we call, you can see that when A and B come together and become coherent, then this number C is a much bigger peak on the curve. So you basically added both of those two energetic signatures together to get C, which is called constructive interference. And so the two become one and you come up with a much higher energetic state, which then stabilizes and transforms the tissues back into a healthy state. So that's what we do when we're trying to do and train. The next one on the, on the right hand side, D and E, is we're putting in a frequency that is exactly the mirror image or opposite of the, of the pathogenic, uh, of the pathological frequency. And so you can see here that as those two cross over each other, they cancel each other out to form F, which is essentially like a straight line. You've, you've neutralized the, the frequency that was causing the dysfunction. So that's called destructive interference. And so those are the two primary ways that frequencies are used. We either use a combination of one or two or both of those, and that's really effective. If we can, let's say, for instance, with our example of the arthritic knee, we put through a destructive interference where we, you know, we've, we, we put through a frequency which, which reduces inflammation. Let's say that the frequency D is a frequency of inflammation, right? And so now we're going to put through E, which is the anti-wave 
of the frequency for inflammation. And in that way, it cancels out, and next minute, no more inflammation. Right? The energetic signal to maintain the inflammatory response by the white cells or the damaged tissues in the, in the, um, in the, in the bone and the cartilage in the joint, all of a sudden, there's no, there's no electrical frequency there to keep it going. And so it must respond. It must actually stop doing it. And um, then once that's starting to slow down, we can then put through the right positive frequency saying, hey, you guys, now that we've got rid of the negative frequency, this is what we want you to do. Okay, this is the good frequency. So the cells go, oh, yeah, great. That's what we needed. We just needed to be reminded about what we needed to do. So you can see how that combination of both destructive and constructive interference is how we use frequencies uh, to, to heal the physical body. It hopefully makes sense as to what we're trying to do. And so when the Healy comes up with a whole range of different frequencies, what it's doing is it's providing you a combination of these types of frequencies that are doing exactly what we just discussed, destructive interference, constructive interference, taking away the negative, putting in the positive. Makes sense, doesn't it? It's not, not, well, when you look at it that way, it's not that hard to understand. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, if we look at the biological hey, resonance, Michael. yeah. Um, I just wanted to add something to that if I could, and it just really ties in with the product being a, the resonance. There's actually the law of resonance which says when something that is vibrating at a certain rate and it moves into the field of something else, if that dormant frequency exists within what it moves into the field to, it will awaken it. And so the beauty of this, this resonance device is that it holds these frequencies that are dormant, dormant within us. And so it, it gives the opportunity for those to awaken within us. Yes. So thanks for sharing exactly this too, bro. It's beautiful. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh, yeah, you know, as long as it's making sense, it's it's hard to know. Well, we've got different levels of understanding in the audience, so I'm trying to pitch it for both types. But um, yeah, that's good because those frequencies, uh, you know, basically the cells are waiting to listen to what's next, and if we provide the frequency for it, it then goes, oh, okay, this is what I need to do next, and uh, we can awaken the cell to respond to the frequency comes into resonance so okay so let's let's just look at this again from the chemical versus the electromagnetic point of view <clears throat> on the left here we have the chemical understanding of how cells respond to the environment we have signals which are coming from outside of the cell in this case we have tnf alpha which is an inflammatory cytokine and we have other um, second messengers and um, toxic uh, waste products, they're all coming down and they're basically binding to a receptor. And that then triggers a reaction, usually the influx of calcium or the activation of, of the phosphorylation of different proteins called kinases, which then trigger another sequence of protein reactions where we see the the activation of these transcription factors they change their shape and their conformation they then become active and they bind to the uh, binding sites on the dna which is typically not the actual coding part of the dna it's the non-coding part of the dna the histones and the uh, the introns which then result in the activation of gene expression which then results in the production of messenger RNA and the coding of more proteins. And so the cell responds by having a protein synth synthetic response to deal with whatever it needs to deal with. So that's the chemical model of our, how the cell works. And it all works really wonderful, of course. That it's, but the beauty about this is that before all this happens, it's all being directed energetically. And so the, the picture here on the right, of course, is that you've, in order for those substances to bind to the receptor, there has to be a energetic resonance that occurs between the electric field of the TNF and the receptor. They have to come into a state of resonance 
and then they can come together and bind. So it's a little bit like a car key. You know, when you, you got your, your car lock, you're walking around in the car park and you press your button. And of course, that frequency is specific for your car. And then it's going to go beep, beep, you know, and you go, oh, there, that's right. That's where the car is. So it's exactly the same thing that this, uh, these energetic uh, fields uh, are generating frequencies that allow the conformational changes of the proteins to come together so that they fit into the lock and key. Without the energy there, without the resonance, there's no changing of the shapes and so the lock won't go into the key. So it's all energetic to start with before the chemical can happen. And that's why we've, we've got to start treating people and dealing with these things energetically as well and then support that with the nutrients that the body needs. So here's a few studies on, on how microcurrent works. Uh, these ones are looking at specifically just the use of microcurrent, which is uh, voltage, which is less than um, one milliamp, basically. Um, so we see here that in this, these studies, the first one is a rat study. They looked at the, the uh, samples of the, of the skin and they treated it with specific amounts of microcurrent. And we found that the production of ATP increased by 500%. When there was microcurrent up to 500 microamps. So that's a very low amount of energy, uh, much, much lower than what we would ever find in a TENS machine, for instance, which uses millivolts, which is like orders of magnitude, like 10 to 50 to 100 times more energy than what's being used here in the microcurrent. The microcurrent is basically the amount of energy that the cells use and need in order to maintain their voltage at the, at the right amount. If you put too much in, you, you can overcook the cells. And uh, in fact, ATP production goes down as soon as you go over um, 600 microamps in this particular test. So ATP is the energy producing compound that the cell uses to drive all of those enzymatic reactions, which, which pump, open up the gates and allow the channels, all these little channels to open to allow the diffusion of specific nutrients and, and ions, particularly calcium, sodium, to come flooding into the cell to trigger other enzymes to react. Uh, we see that, that, again, the microcurrent assisted in enhancing protein synthesis, which is the key cellular response uh, by 70%. Uh, amino acid transport, which is required to actually build the proteins that, that are needed to respond to the environment. And then, of course, we have these other things called um, second messengers, such as cyclic AMP, which activate specific enzymes and kinases uh, within the cell. So basically, just giving microcurrent is quite effective, right? So the, the new and the greatest understanding of what happened in the last, say, 10 years is that we can enhance the results of these microcurrents by changing the frequencies. That has led to a whole new ball game. And that's where we're starting to see incredible results. Whereas previously, most of the old research that was done using microcurrents was just using one particular frequency that they found, for instance, like way back in the old days, they found that if you put through uh, three hertz, uh, that you could stimulate bone to, to repair itself. And so that was sort of like where they got stuck. So they never really figured it out that if you used multiple different frequencies, that you would get much more beneficial res responses. So now we've understood that. We know that all these other frequencies can turn on and switch off different types of cellular responses as we see here in this next slide, which was one which my dear friend Carolyn McMakin was involved with, which was why I brought her over to Australia to introduce the frequency-specific frequency microcurrent into Australia when I was the technical director at Health World Metagenics. So 
I saw this presentation she did, and it basically showed that she was treating severe fibromyalgia patients with cervical spine trauma, which have incredible pain, all over body pain of at least eight out of 10 for, for like more than seven years. So these are like the, the, the people that everyone else has, has just forgotten about. No, nothing works. She was able to use the, the frequencies, specific frequencies to treat inflammation of the spinal cord. And we see here that in the first visit that the levels of these inflammatory mediators interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and TNF-alpha, they, they all promote the primary inflammatory response. And we can see that the levels went basically from four, 400 or 450 down to under 50. And that's over a, a 60 to 90 minute treatment. And then the second visit, it sort of went back up a little bit and then she treated it again and it went back down. Third visit, it went up and then it went down. So it got less and less and less with each visit. <clears throat> but basically, this is unheard of because even the strongest drugs, like if, if you give people cortisone injections, you can't get this type of response. So this blew me, blew me away. And I said, look, Karen, you've, we've got to introduce this to Australia. And that's how we, we um, that's why we, we got together and started to bring microcurrent, frequency specific microcurrent to Australia. You can see at the bottom on the right-hand side, the pain levels, the VAS, the, the visual analog scale for pain. You can see that the pain went down from like an eight down to basically zero in a 60 to 90 minute treatment. And this is just off the charts. This just blows, blows people away. And even the patients don't know what to do. <laughs> I've, been, I've had this pain for 10 years and now I've got no pain. Now I came back in a period of a week, but you can see it only came back to about half the level. And then she treated him again and went down and it gradually got down. After about six treatments, they're completely gone. So wonderful, uh, groundbreaking research that led to this research, which is what we did here in Australia um, at the University of Sydney with um, Vivian Reeve. She's a professor of um, pharmacology at Sydney University. And we decided that if we could do some type of animal research to show what, what, how the actual anti-inflammatory effects are working. Um, so what we did is we, we had mice and we held these mice with, a, with graphite gloves and we fed the frequencies in through the graphite gloves. <clears throat> and we did that for four minutes. And then the rats were then, they had their ears painted with an inflammatory substance. And this particular inflammatory model is they measure the thickness of the swelling in the ear. And that's uh, how they determine the level of inflammation. And they then use the pharmaceutical drugs to then prove what percentage reduction of swelling took place as, a, as an inflammatory model for testing different pharmaceutical drugs. So we thought, well, okay, let's just use the same model you use for paracetamol and, and everything else. And so what we found was that there were two particular frequencies that produced amazing results. Approximately 70% reduction in ear swelling from only four minutes of treatment. So, and of course, you know, rats basically are not really um, have too much of a placebo response in, in, in in other words, they don't have to believe in the treatment. <laughs> so doing, doing these sorts of things in animals is, is usually very responsive because you don't have any mental or emotional blockages that are blocking them as well. So that was, uh, that was pretty phenomenal research. We then did another test where we looked at a more longer term study on how the microcurrent frequencies could change the immune response over time, which required a different model, which involved the use of uh, UV radiation, which causes like a sunburn on the skin of the rats. And so usually sunburn uh, of any type causes a type of immune suppression. 
in the rat, even in humans, you get a temporary state of immune suppression. So what they then did is they then painted some of this contact sensitizing drug called oxalazone on the, the hind leg of the rats. And depending on how, what sort of inflammatory response occurred, we could determine how much immune suppression was, was, was in fact caught being um, induced by the, by the sunburn. So we then treated the rats again using the, the treatment um, where we, this time we, we used basically the frequencies to block the, the um, dysfunction of the immune system, uh, which was 40 hertz and 116 hertz. And we found that there was basically, in this chart, you can see the yellow, the yellow um, bar there, which shows that we again had a massive correction of the immune suppression that took place in the, the non-UV group, which is basically the control. So we had almost like a 60 to 70% reduction in the immune suppression caused by UV radiation. And that was over a two week period when, this, when the second test was done, um, <clears throat> where they painted the oxalazine onto the rats. So that shows that one four minute treatment, two weeks prior to the, treat, to the painting of the oxalazone, caused a permanent change in the immune response that resulted in the correction of immune suppression. So we thought that was pretty damn good too. So. Anyway, skiding a bit there because um, <laughs> we had such good results. You know, everyone likes to uh, promote their good results. So. Now, fibromyalgia is a situation which is becoming more and more prevalent these days. And we have, um, as I showed you those slides where Carolyn treated these fibromyalgia patients that had cervical and spine trauma. And she had those amazing results in reducing the cytokines and the, and the, um, and the pain in these patients. So not all fibromyalgia patients have cervical and spinal trauma, right? Uh, fibromyalgia is like a non-specific severe muscle pain over the body, which is associated with fatigue as well as just chronic unremitting pain and um, def uh, in inhibition of range of motion. So it becomes quite debilitating. Some people get it a bit mixed up with chronic fatigue syndrome, but the two are very similar. The key thing here with fibromyalgia is that they have a particular pattern of, um, uh, of heightened muscle tone and pain in, in myofascial um, trigger points over the body. So the interesting thing is that what we find is, and what we realized after many years is that um, you actually have to try and find the cause of, of the dysfunction <laughs> because muscle tension and muscle trigger points will form for a variety of different reasons. So it, it may not, might, may not have been a, a particular injury or trauma that caused it. For instance, uh, some, some cases we've seen is where people have, that live close to um, farms where they spray a lot of chemicals. Uh, they end up developing severe fibromyalgia. And uh, it was only when we realized that it was due to the organic pesticides that we needed to treat the liver and do detoxification for that they got better. So it wasn't actually a structural issue. It wasn't due to, you know, some type of um, trauma of some sort, which was affecting the nervous system. Uh, it was due to some other thing. And we found also that even cases, um, you know, for instance, people that got a bad flu, that the flu just sort of went on and on and on and they developed severe fibromyalgia and so we had to basically find out what the frequencies were to treat the viral infection and then when we did that all of a sudden the muscles started to calm down 
and um, the toxins that are associated with the infection was what was maintaining the muscle tone and the, and the trigger points in the muscle system. And as you can see here, there's a list of other stuff here too, like menopausal women, for instance, have a high incidence of fibromyalgia due to ovarian, thyroid and adrenal dysfunction. And that's basically due to chronic stress. You know, by the time you hit menopause, um, you know, life's probably had a bit decent, you know, go at you. And the constant stress of daily living has resulted in you burning out your ovaries, your thyroids and your adrenals. And that, that situation is quite common. And we see a deterioration of these patients getting overweight, fatigued and developing chronic muscle pain, which, which causes the lack of mobility, which causes their weight, you know, and it just goes round, round, round. round. So you basically had to treat the, source of the ovarian dysfunction and the uh, using frequencies and we got specific frequencies for the ovaries for the thyroid and the adrenal glands and um, try and teach these people how to relax you know, to try and help to do, to regenerate their uh, their reserves um, other patients were purely they had low back severe back pain that was unresponsive to treatment um, have tried everything everything and in the end it was uh, dairy and gluten reactions in their gut because the the inflammatory process in the small intestines is adjacent the small intestinal inflammation was causing trigger points to be activated in the lower back and it didn't matter what these people did it was only when we got rid of the dairy and the gluten that their back got better uh, so there's umpteen different reasons why these sorts of severe fibromyalgic patients can occur some can be specifically due to, say, vitamin D or magnesium deficiencies. Um, some cases where they've had to go overseas and they got 10 or 15 different vaccinations in one hit, and basically they never recovered from there. They went straight into chronic muscular uh, pain. And so we had to find frequencies for the vaccinations to try. And as soon as we did that, the patients responded and their, their chronic pain um, could be treated effectively. So what are, the idea of doing this is that every person is, is unique and it shows you you just can't treat someone the same with the same treatment, right? This is, this is we, we need to have an understanding of this personalised process um, and putting the power back into the individual's hands by using the Healy device is just an incredible, you know, gift because it's allowing and empowering you to be your own doctor, basically, uh, to that nobody knows you better than you. You have the ability to figure out, oh, my juice, you know, what was it? Was it due to this? I, got, I might have had um, some sort of exposure. Uh, or I've, every time I eat this particular food, I get a gut ache or something. Like, these are the things that you know better than anyone else. And, um, and that's empowering because now you have a tool which you can activate for the frequencies to be selected via the quantum sensor, which is specific for what's active at that moment in time. Um, so it's a tremendous gift. Uh, but, you know, but every one of these problems, there's frequencies. We, we have a frequency for the cervical nerves we have a frequency for the spinal nerves. We have a frequency for, for inflammation. We have frequencies for enhancing ovarian uh, estrogen production and, and, and progesterone production. We have frequencies to, uh, to, uh, for different types of allergens, for viruses, for chemicals. We have frequencies for organic chemicals. Uh, so and vaccinations so there you go like why not take advantage of frequencies to deal with the underlying um, causes and then we can start to see how often these chronic pain conditions can be resolved so hopefully that makes sense so uh, what I want to do is basically finish with uh, this particular thing is that we've been talking about how consciousness uh, 
our consciousness can be used for self healing and we can use the Healy. Whenever we use the Healy, we have to engage with the process with our own intention. And that's very important. We have to access that information field of the higher dimension. Now, can you imagine that if you direct your mind and your, your, your thoughts and your emotions directly into accessing the information field, think of it that there's this layer of consciousness that is there all the time. And you can just go in and open it up, open the door, pull out a book that's got the exact information that you need. Now, if you have that firmly embedded into your mind and that creates a sense of, wow, isn't that wonderful? That's the type of energy that is going to allow the access to the information field more effectively for your condition. You have to understand that you, the person who's using the Healy, has to come with the right type of intention and the right focus. If you don't do that and you're just doing it, oh yeah, I'll just take whatever it is, just whack that on and there's really no exchange, then you may not be getting the best quality data from the information field. Does that make sense? Because you might have grabbed a book off the shelf that wasn't really the main thing that was necessary. It could help, but it may not have been the one that was really the perfect one. But if you focus your own intention and then you give thanks with gratitude that you've accessed this information, that opens all the doors energetically in your higher dimensional self. Okay, remember you are dealing with the seventh dimensional Akashic records which your soul has to go in and access in, on a normal situation. This device is assisting you do that. So engage your soul, engage your mind and your heart. Your heart can be engaged through expression of gratitude and thankfulness and love. If you come to any situation with love and gratitude, everything will come your way. All of these energetic responses will become activated. Right? Your body will start to be receptive to receiving the frequencies because of your attitude of love and, and gratitude to your cells, to your body. You have to understand that you are an integral component of the healing. It's not just a device that's doing it. You are the healer. You are the great healer. Your higher dimensional self, the soul, is what's giving you the energy to restore the energetic dysfunction that's creating it. The Healy is simply helping that process. And it can work, you know, to a certain extent by itself. But imagine if you engage fully with your heart and your mind coming into coherence with exactly what you're trying to achieve. Now you're putting the whole thing on steroids. You're going to get fantastic results. And this is the reason why some people get very quick results and other people get, you know, takes quite a few treatments before things start to happen because people are not engaging with their total presence uh, and opening up their heart and their mind to become engaged with this process. I can't stress that how important it is. Of course, this is just how we're focusing tonight on how we can do our own self healing what this particular slide here, this is the Schumann resonance slide that shows that the Schumann resonance is like a, an index uh, which tells us about the frequency of the atmosphere around the earth. And this frequency, you know, it has different types of um, harmonic frequencies which determine, you know, the earth's, geomagnetic uh, frequencies. And there's a number of things that can cause changes to it. But what we see here is that this April, on the 5th of April, we had a massive worldwide meditation. And I think probably a lot of you probably got in on that as well, which was really wonderful, where we blessed the earth and blessed all humanity, you know, to, to come through this COVID um, virus to say no, to, to basically send love 
and to send gratitude rather than fear and, and deficiency. And so it was just interesting. I thought I'd throw this in here because our own consciousness has an effect on the consciousness of everyone and everything around us because we're all part of the unified quantum field. We're all part of the one consciousness, which is the creator of all, all brothers and sisters. And so when we come into a unification of consciousness on a mass scale, you can see what happened to the Schumann resonance. Look at the day before on the fourth, that was the, the frequency response. And then the day later, we see this massive activation of human consciousness on the planet, which essentially just blasted the whole conscious resonance of the earth. So that's what we can do when we become unified and in love and in gratitude. So I just thought I'd leave you with that. Um, the final one, of course, is that if you get rid of all the, all the bad stuff, if you get rid of the fear, you get rid of the negative emotions, you treat the physical dysfunction uh, using your frequencies, your diet, your nutrition, um, your, your, your meditation, uh, then what happens is that your consciousness will rise automatically. And as your consciousness rises, more and more people are affected simply by your presence. And this is your greatest gift. You don't have to go out and save the world. Just work on yourself. Just work on yourself. That's the greatest gift. And then you can have a massive effect by helping others to raise their consciousness as well.